what's going on youtube today i'm going to talk about something that's probably one of the most controversial subjects on the internet and that's dinos so today you're going to get the good the bad but nothing but the truth So back about 10 years ago, I had my own shop called Crossroads Performance. We specialized in a lot of late model Mustang builds and in doing that, I did a lot of dyno testing. So you get into the debate on the internet. You see Mustang dynos, you see dyno jet, you see Superflow dynos, you see dyno pack. Now I can only speak for what I have dealt with. And that is Mustang dynos, dyno jet, and a Superflow engine dyno, okay? So when I built the engine in Casper, we did put it on the uh, engine dyno over at Prestige Motorsports over in Concord, North Carolina. And it made really good power. You know, it made uh, 575 horsepower and you know 540 some foot pounds of torque okay that's really good so why is that a problem you know why are engine dynos not the end all to the conversation i'll tell you why most of the time when you're on a uh, engine dyno you have a special set of dyno headers you have a controlled air environment and a lot of times the engine is run completely void of all accessories on the front and so when you put the engine in the car you always have to speculate well are my headers killing my power is my exhaust killing my power how about the uh, front engine drive you know your alternator your fan your power steering pump all of those things come into play in parasitic loss and so the main purpose for engine dynos is mainly for uh, engine shops, things of that sort, so that they can develop uh, their engine packages and eliminate as many variables as they possibly can from the equation. As we all know, the more variables you have in a situation, the more chance you have for errors. And the same thing applies to dynos. So when you're on an engine dyno, you know, you don't have a transmission that's sucking 20% loss or 30% loss in some cases. Um, you know, you're, you're, you have eliminated it down to the bare essentials and that is just that running engine, you know, and that's why, and especially when you dyno testing for parts, you know, a lot of times you're talking about onesies and twosies as far as the numbers you're looking for. And so, you know, a lot of that can be easily absorbed in uh, variables, you know, rear end, uh, oil temperature, um, tire pressure in your rear tires, the weight of your rear tires. So I'm gonna show you something that was pretty astounding. Back when I had my shop, I did a back-to-back -back dyno test on a chassis dyno and then I took it to a another chassis dyno just to see the difference and I think you will be shocked okay so what we are looking at here is a dyno sheet from my old 4.6 liter Mustang is a 96 GT two valve car and when trick flow first came out with their cylinder heads for the two valve engine uh we did some testing uh for them and we put a set on build a short block a tested four uh four valve block put flat top pistons in it made it about a 13 to 1 compression engine and so i put the manual transmission in it just so we could get the rear wheel numbers okay now you look right here, okay, we took it down to Precision Dyno, the same very place where I dynoed my truck. And at the time, 
it made 432 rear wheel horsepower at the wheels and that was pretty that was pretty much the most um horsepower somebody had made at the rear wheels with a two valve engine okay so my ultimate goal for the car was to go drag racing in a certain local series called the ptra pro tree racers association so in doing so you have to be able to cut a killer light on a uh, pro tree so i put a fully rollerized ati built c4 with a nitrous converter yada 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 and the only change was going from a t45 with a good clutch to the c4 and this graph right here is the same engine as this test and you can see how the power dropped from 432 to 293 and that was no other changes so you know that raised a few eyebrows everybody started blaming the converter started blaming transmission but we took it to the track and guess what the car ran faster than it did with the manual transmission at the track so you know dyno jets uh and ch other chassis dynos for that matter they're designed and calibrated to see a total connection from the flywheel to the rear tires meaning what you're seeing here and the reason why this is such a big difference is the slip inside the converter okay you know and this was about a 4500 style converter and you know it was meant for nitrous it didn't have a sprag in it and so you know you can say okay well that's one test maybe throw that out this junk okay so another setup on the um see this right here it made 383 345 on a dyno jet now let's talk about the difference between that and a mustang dyno the same car same setup on this graph it you can't see it because it's faded but it made 317 rear wheel horsepower and let's see here 294 pound feet of torque okay and that is the same as engine combination as was ran on the uh dyno jet in fact that test was ran nearly on the same day um and you can also see that there's two sets of lines here i did another back-to-back -back test because i wanted to find out if that was a just an anomaly or a fluke or what and basically the same result took place um went from 317 on the mustang dyno to 246 at the rear tires and lost 71 horsepower and 68 pound feet of torque as seen at the rear tires just going from the manual t45 to the c4 automatic okay so you know you can have two separate dynos the the legacy of dyno jet versus mustang dyno i think that battle will go on forever you know which one is right you know my personal belief i tend to think the dyno jet is more accurate and my reasoning for that is when i dynoed my 96 gt when it was bone stock it was factory rated at 215 horsepower took it to a uh, precision dyno and it made 192 rear wheel horsepower and to me that seemed to be a fairly good representation because it was 100 percent bone stock and so it gave me a good baseline and it made 260 pound feet of torque now um 
took it that's another good test because i did go to a, another mustang dyno up in mooresville and it read like 157 rear world, rear world horsepower so you know my main thing is you've got to recognize what a dyno is for a dyno is nothing but a tool you know it is meant for you to be able to find issues diagnose problems and see the gains that you have poured your hard money hard earned cash into because you know when you go to start building a car you know not everybody has a drag strip in their backyard and so it's good to have a way to validate your testing and all of the money that's been spent so that you can actually see the gains so until next time this is andy on unity motorsports see you later